Very warm, warm welcome to everyone who have uh, joined for this uh, webinar today. Um, my name is Jazz, uh, Jazz Wan Singh. Um, I'm lucky enough uh, to meet you, meet some of you and most of you um, through uh, virtually with support um, and uh, be it onboarding or any of the other uh, opportunities we have to we have had to meet those who I have not met yet uh, I'm sure we will have some opportunities in future uh, where we uh, can meet each other and talk about our products and how we can provide services um, all right we'll uh, get started um, so today's um, agenda uh, today what we're going to talk about is two of our very important products uh, which is SQL Beacon and uh, My Virtual DB Portal. And today's agenda is going to be um, obviously some housekeeping first to make sure a uh, brief introduction about the service, uh, SQL Beacon and Portal, and then a roadmap, Q3 roadmap, which we released in, um, in January, um, and some new features and functionality with some demos. Uh, we'll also give you a glimpse of a Q4 roadmap which is going to be released in the next quarter um, and then how to provide us feedback any any questions at the end we will cover everyone's questions so we'll start from there um, so if i can request everyone um, i think everyone is on mute by default um, and just in case um, if you have any questions you can raise your hand or contact us via chat for any any issues you have uh, up there um, and then we should be able to assist with that. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got that in a read mode. And yeah, so this is me, uh, Jad Singh. Um, I'm the operations, uh, operations and product manager for the managed services at uh, Vodi IT Solutions. Um, been with Vodi for uh, seven plus years now. Uh, I also manage a team of a 24 seven team, which is responsible for monitoring 30,000 plus instances uh, of all our clients. Um, I've been using SQL since 2006 uh, from version 2000. When I started as a DBA um, in the 2000, early, late 2006 and 2007. At that time, we were still using SQL 2000 and 2005, and from there onwards, I've got 12 plus years hands on experience as a DBA, but then I also moved into the IP development for the organization, uh, assisted with a lot of products. SQL Beacon, uh, some of you and most of you are very familiar with uh, for our organization, uh, which has helped um, us uh, grow at, uh, at a humongous scale uh, where we can now support and monitor and provide you a 24, true 24 seven virtual DB service. So that's me. Um, We'll uh, get started um, on the actual product, uh, what we're going to talk today about uh, SQL Beacon and My Virtual DBA. Um, those um, who are um, our current clients, um, they understand uh, SQL Beacon, but I'll give an overview of SQL Beacon and Portal. So we developed um, SQL Beacon and Portal to underpin our world-class team of DBAs who work 24-7 um, and they're available a phone call away or a ticket away every time you need them. SQL Beacon, what is SQL Beacon? Um, it's, it's an agent-less monitoring and alerting engine which pulls the data uh, from all our clients and uh, we process that data um, and uh, we respond accordingly uh, before any alert or any indication becomes a real issue. Um, so that's where our 24-7 award-winning virtual DBA team, uh, they provide support uh, to all our clients um, and keep an eye on it 24-7. We are true 24-7 uh, sitting right in Australia. Uh, we have team works uh, 12 hours from 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. and shift and 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. So that's how we cover our shifts there. So moving on from product, why SQL Beacon is important to us because data is everything and it does collect data for us and we, we use that data, uh, provide you um, reports and a better reporting and better way of looking into your own data or your service data uh, on our portal. 
this is where we thought um, we want to have a product, uh, my virtual DBI portal, uh, which is a single point of truth for all the status of your SQL servers. Uh, portal give you access to all the insights you need from a real-time performance stats, uh, capacity planning, and now we introduced some of the new things for all the admin teams as well uh, in the organizations who also want to make sure that um, they are paying the money and everything. So we're providing some reporting for them as well. Um, so we will um, we'll talk uh, in detail more about my virtual DBA portal because uh, SQL Beacon is, um, is sitting in the background uh, collecting data from your servers and sending it to us. Um, and but you do not actually access that product. Uh, we enhance that product to make sure that we can provide you a better portal uh, functionality. Um, so hence, we'll be more focused and pretty much focused on the My Virtual DBA portal today. Um, this uh, was our Q3 roadmap. Um, and in the Q3 roadmap, which was released in January uh, 2019, we um, released, uh, we planned a number of things um, which we wanted to do. The key, we just summarized them in, a, in a five categories, is we wanted to reduce monitoring footprint on all our clients um, to make sure that the monitoring software actually does not have any impact on your servers or target servers we're monitoring, uh, how we can make it better. Uh, we wanted to provide some built-in analytics so that you can see, uh, do some real-time capacity planning of the servers, that how they can help. Um, and subscription balance, that is something uh, some of our clients uh, and most of our clients, they know that we work on a subscription model. Um, and in there, you have a monthly hours allocated as per the subscription, you sign up with us, be it a bronze or silver or a gold or platinum. Uh, depending on that, you will have a balance of hours. So we wanted to give you visibility to the hours, uh, that how many hours you have consumed in this month and how you can utilize the services better. Uh, we also wanted to provide a version and service back report to make sure that all, our, all your SQL servers are always up to date. Uh, with the current security patches and service packs applied, uh, and obviously some improved UI to make it better experience for everyone, uh, to make sure that um, you like to log on to portal and go from there. Uh, so we'll be talking about uh, these five things, and then at the end we'll also cover uh, what's coming up in the next quarter, and what are the new features we are releasing and we have it planned. Um, so the first one, um, this is a bit hidden one, uh, reduced monitoring footprint, because uh, reduced monitoring footprint is something we wanted to do on the SQL Beacon side. So I wouldn't be able to show you a demo of that one because that's running on the servers. So some of the feedback uh, we received from our clients, um, SQL Beacon collects a lot of data. Um, and it, because being an agent less, if it is monitoring 50 servers or 100 servers or or more instances, uh, it's gonna perform all the checks on the target server saying that is SQL online? Are the jobs running fine? Are the databases online? So any of those checks, they execute every two minutes. So what we were doing in the past, we were using our clients' SMTPs um, and that, those, uh, that SMTP was uh, sending hundreds and thousands of emails during the day 24 seven, and we received a lot of feedback from our clients saying that, hey, um, is there any way uh, that we can reduce the emails? And we say that we have a product which is an agent, agent less, has no impact on the SQL servers, production servers, uh, but we're working on a solution. So on that feedback, what we've done now in the new version of SQL Beacon is we have a product which do not use uh, SMTP at all. So 100% cut uh, of that. So in the future release uh, or the current release, which we are rolling out to most of our clients and slowly uh, will be in touch. I sent uh, uh, that an email last month, uh, the minimum prerequisites we need uh, for that one. Uh, those who are not on the new version, get in touch or we will be in touch with you uh, to get started on that one. So we, Basically, what we did is uh, we don't we no longer use your SMTP. 
um, and we use an API and service bus Azure API on a secured HTTPS channel to receive data from that, which means um, it's low on resources. We we cut down any resource consumption on the on the monitoring server. Um, it's it's now further enhanced product, which was already an agent less, and now all it does is collect data and use our own API and service bus to send the alerts back to us. So that's why it's, it's a bit hidden and I wouldn't be able to give you a demo on that one. Um, but the benefit of that is using um, API and uh, using service bus has allowed us also provide uh, built-in analytics and real-time dashboard reports. Um, and on the, on the portal uh, where you can see that what uh, uh, your current CPU consumption is what your current memory consumption on the server. So it's it's accurate. So what we have done is we uh, we are providing uh, replacing our existing web-based reports on the portal um, with the, the new Power BI embedded reports. So the beauty of that is that you can now compare uh, servers that how CPU is behaving on the availability groups be it a primary or secondary, two of you wanted to see that how it was doing at particular time in a day, um, that why my CP was high at two o'clock, uh, was there any long running queries or was there any backups being performed or any of those other things will be, uh, you'd be able to see. So we wanted to make analytics better because uh, data, uh, better data means better analytics. So we completely redesigned SQL Beacon, how it, collect the data and how we can present the data on our portal. So I will be walking you through um, each of the um, the features here um, and I'll also show you how to log on to portal and what do you see. Um, so I'll switch from this screen to my portal login screen which is here. So if I go there so I've, I've logged on uh, because of the live demo demons, uh, to be honest. I just wanted to make sure that I'm logged on and I should be able to see. So your current URL, which is the myvirtualdba.com, which you already have, will continue to work exactly as it is. Um, so don't go on a URL here. This is just a redirection to the new portal because uh, we're moving. Uh, we wanted to run everything in parallel with the zero outage uh, on monitoring and the portal. So we're switching all our clients slowly. So when you're on the new SQL beacon, you should be able to switch, uh, log on to the new portal. You wouldn't even notice that you've just been redirected to the new portal. So this is a login screen. You put your username and password. Um, obviously, uh, these are known things. Um, if you forget your password, if you don't have a login, you can request a login here, which triggers a ticket to us, and we will support from there. And in, in order to get access to the portal, uh, you must be a managed services client, a uh, virtual DB client who can, who are the only one who are, have access to the portal, but anyone within the organization, your organization should be able to access it. So moving on from there, once you log on, um, I'm using us, uh, Variety Solutions data uh, for today's demo, because um, it was easy that way. Um, so as you can see, this is the login screen, which you will see where you can see all the servers. The servers, you don't see any, so that on that icon here, as what you can see is the 2% is the current CPU, uh, one error there, and that's obviously name of the server. So these two are, are Azure um, databases, so that's why you don't see CPU consumption right on the top of that. Um, so moving on uh, from there, you can see errors, and there are some, that's very home screen. In there, you see if you click here, show errors only, that'll take you to that screen where you can actually see only errors because uh, you're now trying to focus to resolve the issues there. Um, and auto refresh, it'll obviously auto refresh and provide you that. So performance reports, built-in analytics is something we wanted to talk about. So we are here, that's that tab here. There are a number of tabs. There'll be more tabs added in the future, which will provide you some more information um, where you can, um, see a lot more reports coming up in, in our future releases. Um, so this was a platform change for us um, and we wanted to bring everything together. So here it is. Um, so this is our Power BI embedded uh, reports here. So 
at the bottom you can see CPU, disk latency, disk. I'll click on each of them and show you how it works. Um, these are the last 24 hours. We wanted to make it quick. And these are the last month. Uh, and then you can drag and see that what time you want it to go. So go back to the last three months and see that. So as of today, this is that. So if you drag this anywhere, it'll take its time and load that graph for you. So in here, we have a list of servers we're currently being monitored, which is, um, in our case, these are the two servers. If you have 10 SQL servers, you should be able to see all the instances here. Um, so if I click on one of them, as at the moment I can see, and I can see that the graphs have changed, and I can see info for that one only. But if I click two, oh, I was not expecting that. But if you click on that one, um, that'll show you a report of the second one. Obviously, it requires a refresh, uh, which I haven't done that. Um, and you move on from there to the disk latency graph. And let me just refresh it anyway, just in case. So whilst it's loading its data, we'll go back to the main page. And in here, when you click on the Wariati solutions or any of the servers, um, you should be able to see the server info there. Um, so they are being loaded at the moment. Takes a couple of minutes to load at the first time because um, that's a lot of data coming from all the servers. So here it is. So here we have uh, the last 24 hours. I've refreshed it as of what it's now. So if I click on the disk latency, it'll move on to the graphs and it'll give me a disk read um, and write and disk transfer rates by each of the each of the storage points we have in there and the SQL servers you select here. So you can click on each of the server here and then you can click on the drive there and it'll reload those graphs for you. And you should be able to compare uh, each of them that how they're behaving on the servers. So next, as yeah, as you can see the graphs have changed here. So that's you can see that how it's behaving on each of each of the server, how my reads and writes are they aligning aligning together or not. As I can see that it's it's pretty much same, which is affecting there. So moving on to the disk consumption, this was the one of the graphs which uh, will help you build some trends across the drives because of the last month data will be able to tell you that are you running out of space on one of the drives there how is it going so if i click on l here uh, for an example on that one and i can see that it's pretty flat line on that server so that means i have nothing to worry about similar to that you can do that for the monthly one uh, on when you have a login for your own servers, you can actually also see that how everything was behaving at that time. There's a hover over your mouse on that one and it should be able to tell you that how was it going. So moving on to the memory one, uh, it's just the total uh, memory usage of total memory size by run date and everything, that's all here. Again, if you select the server, uh, you can separate those reports and you should be able to see that when was a high consumption and when was a low consumption and how is it behaving. So it pretty much tells you right information on that server, total memory size is that one and how much I'm consuming. There's not much here. I can see that as a DBA. And moving on to the PLE one, page life expectancy is very important um, and hence that. So these are the same graphs, which uh, same data, which we were providing previously but we've just changed the way we are reporting them, which I'll talk a bit more in the UI section that why we did that, uh, why it was important for us to do that. So if I take go back to the analytics, so that was most of our analytics part uh, in, that, in that section there. Um, the next one was the subscription balance. Um, so one of the things uh, we received a lot of uh, those who are our client, as I mentioned previously, uh, they they know um, that what the subscription and I has briefly touched on that point uh, when I started that each of our uh, virtual DBA clients will have a monthly allocated hours. Um, there some of our clients would also decide to buy some prepaid hours uh, on top of the allocated hours. So for an example, if you have a 12 hours every month in with your subscription, you, would, you might buy a 40 hours block of a prepaid hours on top of that. 
So what do you use those hours for? So what is covered in the subscription? In the subscription cover is access to the portal, to data, uh, to the team of expert DBAs and the data analytics uh, people here consultants and, and the technical senior DBAs, all of them, um, and also monitoring 24-7 through monitoring, that's all covered. Uh, but when it comes to if we have to resolve something, so that's where when we spend some time on resolving issues for you, be proactively or reactively, uh, be it a P1s or a low-key issues, that's where the hours get consumed. So uh, we will charge uh, we will deduct the time spent uh, on your service to resolve issues from from the hours we uh, you have in your kitty. Um, so what we do is that we had uh, we received a lot of feedback from our clients uh, that hey it's a half it through the month we don't know how many hours we have consumed and what's left um, sometimes because the hours uh, get overridden uh, you they refreshed every month. Sometimes you may have a month where you have not used any hours and they not gone unused. So we wanted to provide visibility to our clients uh, to make sure that they get the true value from the service um, and from the subscription they've signed up for. Um, so we wanted to provide a visibility of the hours you've used, of the prepaid hours you've used, um, and also how many tickets uh, you've raised with us in the last week and overall um, and where uh, have you used those hours? So we're providing you timesheet um, visibility for the time we spend with the description and everything. Some of you may not have seen those timesheets in the past um, because they would go to the accounts team most of the time or the managers, so they will pay the bill. So I'll switch on to that uh, one over there, that tab I had open there for the admin one. Um, so if I go there on the admin report. So as you can see, that's the uh, the first uh, page when you first log on and it says the timesheet entries for this week. I'll actually refresh this page uh, to make sure that I've got the, all the data loaded because uh, I had these tabs opened uh, previously here, which obviously require a refresh. Um, so uh, this is again uh, Power BI. All those and that information is available. Just this is a performance, and that's the admin one. So as you can see, that's a summary of all these tabs we have, which we'll further touch here. Um, so that's uh, name of the client in case it'll be you. Uh, prepaid air balance before last week um, and prepaid hours after last week. It's showing zero. Of course, that's us, and we have the way our billing um, and everything works in the background, but in your case, it might show minus one hours or, or plus, so you should be able to see real time. Total open Zendesk ticket. So Zendesk is a help desk which we use where you send us support requests, support at warrior.it.com. You should be able to see them, how many tickets you've currently opened um, and, and how many tickets opened this week um, and total sold ticket this week in this case. And these are the entries for a project name, what project we're using, the task, was it a service request or a maintenance request, and who uh, was the resource who was working on it, and the date of entry and how much time they spent on that one. So that is like a real time view of where we are using your money, where we're using your hours. So moving on to that one is a prepaid time summary, which is here in the prepaid time summary, if you, have prepaid hours, the only gotcha on this one is that if subscription and prepaid hour will not be reflected until the end of the month. Subscription hours will be changed, but if you have a prepaid hours of 40 hours block or 30 hours block, you have to wait till the end of the month to see how your balance is. But you might, um, you can, you might have a multiple projects open here. Some can be for the project related things, some can be for um, the uh, virtual DBA prepaid hours, so you should be able to see the dates and select the date, which date you go in and go back to. So whenever you joined uh, Wadi IT Solutions, become our client, go back to history and see balance of hours from those dates. So it go, goes back all the way since you first onboarded. So in the timesheet entry here, if I go, so what it'll show, it'll show all the projects you currently have open with us and it'll show you your subscription level is, of course, it's non VDBA in our case. Um, it'll be silver, bronze, or, or gold in your case. 
which has that many hours uh, support per month and you currently have that subscription hours this month used. So the balance you see here, you might be saying it's 31 and why it's showing 7.5 because that's a collection of everything. But if I go to the virtual DBA only, so these hours should align up with that one. And I can see that this month I had 12 hours for support and Voriat has already consumed 7.5 hours. So I only have uh, another uh, five hours, 4.5 hours left. So I'm gonna be careful where I'm using my hours, but you can see all the details. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us that, hey, Vori, why did you spend time on that one? And we should be able to provide you details of what happened there. Uh, so that's a description of everything. So moving on to that one, to the ticket run. This is our Zendesk. Um, by clicking here, you can also go to Zendesk and that'll take you to worryit.zendesk.com. And in there, you should have um, everything of all your tickets opened in the Zendesk. Most of you do have client. Every uh, do have account, sorry. Every time you create a ticket with us, by default, your account is created. So all you have to do is set up a password and go to wordit.zendesk.com and you should be able to see overview of your tickets. In this case, this is mine, uh, but that's agent, uh, but in your case, it'll be end user and the tickets we are waiting. So overall, it tells that what's the average reply time from us. So when you submit ticket to us, it tells us that how long it took for us to reply to you on an average minutes uh, is what we hope for. Uh, the guys are generally on the tickets within a couple of minutes and respond, acknowledge, saying that we're working on it, and then we take it from there. And total open tickets with us, if you have any, and total amount of tickets so far you have had with us will be here. Obviously, the number is very high here because we have a lot of internal tickets open for our own tasks. And this is the week's stat. We also wanted to give you a bit more. Uh, is that how many tickets you have opened this week so that you can see that hey, compared to last week, uh, how much support we're getting from Wardy and everything. One of the things which was not even in the, um, in the roadmap, but we wanted to broaden is a handover and notice support section. So what is handover and notice support? Handover is our internal people when they're handing over stuff for your service to each other. Uh, and they tell us, hey, uh, for this client, uh, there is a maintenance from 2 a.m. to 4, 4 a.m. So please be careful on that one. And on the notice board, they will add the maintenance window or any of the other things. We need to be careful of the things like, hey, this job is running, running at 4 a.m. Make sure you check that. Um, in future, what we're going to allow you guys is you should be able to add your own notices here. So you won't have to send us a support email uh, to support at IT saying that, hey, we have a maintenance window from midday to 4 a.m. or midday to 4 p.m. or that night we are doing a service packing and everything. So you should be able to add your own notices here, which will trigger an email to us automatically and we will be aware of it. This is more of uh, visibility. We wanted to make sure that we are very transparent with our clients and they understand uh, that how we manage them. And it's very clear to everyone. Uh, so there's nothing hidden from everyone. So that is something which we decided to allow everyone to be able to see that. Um, moving on from that one, that was um, an important one for us as well. Um, and I'll go to my slide here. Where uh, the next one is a version and service pack report. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to provide um, a report where you can see how your current SQL server, what your current SQL version is. Is it supported? Is it nearing end of support or is it extended support? And your security service packs and, and all the cumulative updates have been applied when required. Uh, we, we get caught in that. We all are culprit of it. Sometimes they don't get applied for, for about a year. I, we still have maybe someone running on RTM and have not applied service pack for SQL Server 2008 R2 or SQL Server 2008. It happens. So we wanted to provide a report to make sure that nothing is out of date and we flag it uh, that what's there. Unfortunately, uh, we were unable to do this in, in a report uh, in the current release. But what we did is we made it easy to be able to navigate, uh, easy navigation. If you click on one of the servers, that'll take you down instead of in the past when you had to click three or four places to be able to see that info. It does provide you what current uh, operating system you're running, what SQL Server version you're running, and some of the other SQL info. Uh, but 
in the in the Q4 release, we will be providing that information collectively collectively for all of them uh, in one of those tabs here in the service bar. We do have the info, but that info just not available collectively for all the servers. But for each of the servers, you can still see that what version of SQL they're running. As in this case, we can see that SP1 Enterprise Edition Core Base Licensing is in this case. But we are bringing a lot more info here, uh, which you should be able to um, see in the, in our next release. We'll I'll talk in a couple of minutes. So that's uh, that was one of the other things uh, in our uh, releases. Improved the UI. Um, so when we talk about improved UI, um, as I mentioned previously, I'll, I'll touch base on that. Um, so in in, a, in in past, what it was um, that everything what you do is every time you have to um, go somewhere or look into the CPU information, I had to click on that one and that'll load uh, CPU graphs here for that server and some of the other performance. And then if I need to see on that server, then I'll have to go backwards um, and click on that one. There was no comparison of one server of be it AGs or be it any of the other primary and secondary server with a log shipping or mirroring or, or a cluster nodes you wanted to see how is it all behaving. There was no comparison. They all were individually sitting there. So with this one is what we did is when we brought the performance report, we brought them all in one place to be able to do a better comparison of of our ease of your resources on the server, be it a CPU, disk or or a memory or any of those and provided you a trending report for the last uh, past 30 days and something like that. So in, in there, we improved our UI in a way. We brought the admin performance and some of the other time in one place. Um, and what we also did is we did is that some of our clients, they had um, they have people whose staff would leave um, at some stage um, and they uh, forget to notify us or we don't know. So what we're doing is we say that we wanted to bring that here as well so that our clients can see that who is the primary contact, what the address and secondary contact. In case there is any change in the staff, they should be able to let us know uh, that, hey, uh, people have left. Can you please update your contact details and everything? So the onus is on both uh, for our clients and us as well. And support policy that how do you want us to support when it comes? So we brought that info there and collectively brought. This is the true information which is being fed from our wiki and everything. So that's why we just we just have a one small tab there where you can click and move switch from one panel to other, wherever you need to go. Um, and obviously a lot better uh, layout of how the SQL Server info uh, is, is presented here. There will be some more uh, changes coming in the future where we can provide the database tables for each of the database options and configurations will be coming as well. So which I'll request you on one of the slides to feel free to provide us feedback, how we can make it better, and we do listen to you uh, on that one. So that was uh, some of the UI changes, but that's not limited to that. There are a lot more UI changes coming in the in the future. The, the key one for us was uh, to make sure that uh, we replace the web-based reporting and move to the Power BI embedded um, to make sure that we get the best of uh, what's available in the market by Microsoft. So moving on from that one, um, which takes us to our uh, roadmap for the Q4. So what's coming, um, and that's very exciting for us um, and for our clients as well, as you can see that we those who use um, Azure uh, for them what we're doing and we bring in Azure managed instance monitoring and data factory monitoring um, you should be able to get benefit from the next release of SQL beacon uh, which is uh, will be sometimes in this quarter and then service back report which we promised in the last one we're definitely bringing in it's being worked on I've seen the beta it's pretty good it's looking great uh, snooze errors and the change frequency of alerts. This is where I was talking to you about that you should be able to let us know when there is a maintenance window um, and if any of the errors. So um, on the on the on the my virtual DB portal where you see some of this uh, servers showing some errors in there. If you click and drill further into the errors, it shows you what those errors are. So you should be able if you are offlining a database for 24 hours. 
So you can basically select and snooze there. And that means that your inbox will not be flooded with the offline alerts every couple of minutes saying that, hey, this database is offline or, or that server is offline because you're doing a maintenance. We're allowing you to be able to snooze uh, everything from there. Uh, and the reduced monitoring footprint in the last quarter, we reduced the monitoring uh, footprint on the monitoring server. And this one, we are now improving all the checks, uh, making them more efficient uh, to be able to make sure that we have less and less impact and further improved uh, uh, queries for uh, the target SQL servers we're monitoring, which is very exciting as we're reviewing all everything, what we currently have, how we can make it better uh, with the new structure and architecture we have. So that's our Q4 roadmap. I think it'll be part of our newsletter as well. So you will be able to see that in next uh, coming week as well. We, I'm surely will be in touch with you um, in uh, in a couple of weeks uh, when the new version is available to allow, to let you know that it's it's available and released. Um, so feedback. Um, if you go, to, if I go back to the portal, um, as you can see, there is a feedback and a support tab there. So that feedback tab, if you click on that one, that is our user voice feedback. So if you have an idea uh, about the portal or any any feedback for the portal or SQL Beacon or how we feel free to post it here. This will post it on our user voice portal uh, where we collect uh, all the feedback from our clients and we um, we people vote there which features they need most. Um, and then we work accordingly, our dev team review, and we provide, we create our roadmaps accordingly based on the feedback from our clients. Uh, this support tab here is to submit a ticket. If you have to submit a ticket uh, to us, you just put your name, uh, email address, and how we can help. This will create a ticket in our Zendesk portal. So in the portal, we're trying to bring everything in a one place so that you log on here. You can see status uh, of your servers. You can also see, submit us uh, tickets and support requests, and you can also tell us how we can make it better. It's a process of improvement, and we'll continue to improve with all your support um, and all your feedback you guys provide us. Um, if I take you, so that's uh, our user voice. You can also, instead of going to the feedback tab on the portal, you can also go to wordit.uservoice.com, and you can vote for any of the features you want to vote there. So in here, you can so vote one, there are some of the feature we just took a screenshot as as or put put your idea there or search for something uh, which you want it might already be there and you can just simply vote for that one so that clear alerts and time pro integration and portal should be capable this is all is what people voted um, and we just brought it here uh, and that's all based on the feedback provided by by our clients um, and uh, and internally, externally, everywhere we go is what we know. Which pretty much sums up the um, uh, our webinar for today uh, for our portal.